The exchange rate is not a policy target, but it's important for growth and price stability. And we'll certainly want to see whether the appreciation, if sustained, will alter our risk assessment. So Draghi says the ECB is watching the FX market, and that's all it took. The euro slides a full cent. Well, I'm joined now by James Shug, he's chief economist at Westpac. Uh, James, this can hardly be classed as your classic verbal intervention, yet a pretty dramatic move in the euro. Yes, I think but there's been a pretty dramatic move in the euro uh, over the last month or two. And uh, there's, I suspect, a lot of players that have made a, a pretty packet and um, they're prepared to, to you know, bank most of that uh, on any sense or any hint that there could be uh, some reason for that, uh, that uh, trade to unwind. So, so, I think that, so I think that's exaggerated the sensitivities of the euro to, to, to these sorts of comments. Did, did you get a sense from Draghi there from what you heard today that he's at all concerned about the strength of the euro or is it still pretty much wait and see? Well, no, they, in the um, risks category around uh, inflation, um, they added the new downside risk uh, related to the, the exchange rate, the appreciating exchange rate, they still cited risks around inflation as balanced, um, but previously the only downside one was weak economic growth. So, so um, they may be perhaps a little bit less balanced uh, than they were previously. Okay, so, so in, in terms of the global currency wars, which we're hearing a lot about lately, the ECB is still very much on, on the sidelines here. Well, well, when you think about it, the European Central Bank's balance sheet has been shrinking because banks have been paying back the LTROs, whereas the Fed's is is ballooning out, uh, as is the Bank of Japan's. You know, there's there's good sort of economic fundamental uh, sense behind the appreciation of the euro on on that basis alone. Okay, you you mentioned the the, the downside risk to the economy that Draghi talked about. Um, does this give the sense that there may be further easing in the months ahead? No, it doesn't uh, in terms of what he's saying. But remember, uh, in February last year, they said that, uh, well, they said interest rates weren't even discussed. Uh, and then they cut rates in, in July and then put in place the OMTs. You know, so sounding confident in the first half of the year doesn't prevent them from, from putting in place aggressive policy action later in the year. And we think that there might be a temporary upswing in quarterly growth about, about the middle of this year related to, to the uh, confidence that's been built up by the OMTs, a uh, lot of liquidity in the system from the Fed and the Bank of Japan, um, and uh, China doing a bit better. Uh, that could see Germany do okay, get some exports going, but then the exchange rate will bite and things like Cyprus, Spain, mm -hmm. uh, French you know, uncompetitiveness, uh, Greeks, Greece debt, Greek debt unsustainability, they'll all come home to roost, markets will uh, turn down sharply again and will resume negative, uh, negative growth. So it's okay. a, there's only a temporary hiatus here I'm afraid. Okay, now Draghi was asked several times more on this topic than any other topic, he was asked on Ireland and the deal agreed over the last 24 hours to cut to ease Ireland's bank debt burden. Um, it does appear that the Bundesbank was probably against this deal uh, and would suggest to you perhaps that the Bundesbank is even more isolated within the ECB. It's been outmaneuvered on OMTs, for example, and other things. What does this mean? Well, look, I, I've got to be careful what inferences I draw from very curt responses from, from Draghi. We've noted it. Uh, that presumably means we've noted it but haven't yet worked out what we're going to say about it because we can't agree what we're going to say about it. Uh, so I think you, you're right. An implication might be that, that the Bundesbank's uh, upset about that. They don't, I mean, if, if there's anything that has the vaguest whiff of state financing by the central bank, uh, it, uh, it gets right up the go to those Germans. And uh, I suspect that this is an example of uh, one of those examples. OK, and just to finish up, uh, he was also asked uh, by Reuters journalist on the Monte di Paschi scandal. Of course, he was governor at the Bank of Italy a couple of years ago. Um, he was asked what he thought about the suggestion. He swept it under the carpet so as not to spoil his chances of becoming ECB president. Do you think the scandal, which is still un unfolding, do you think it might come back to haunt him in some way? Yeah, look, it's, I think it goes with the job of central bank governor, the ECB, that you've got skeletons in the past. I mean, uh, Trichet certainly had them. Um, uh, Duisenberg, well, I, I don't know, but uh, he's not around anymore. Um, Look, uh, it's part of the job. Uh, European politics, it, there's so much that we just don't see, I'm sure, <laughs> and except for little bits that pop up from time to time. And, and, and here's an example today. OK, James, thanks very much. That was uh, James Shug, Chief Economist at Westpac. I'm Jamie McGeever. This is Reuters.